Hello, everyone. So, in this chapter, we're going to start to we're going to start talking about the um, steady state com conduction transfer. But why do we why do we use a steady state con condition, and why why do we emphasize on this condition, a steady state? Because the concept that we're going to talk about that is called thermal resistance. Uh, can be only used in a steady state condition. You remember what a steady state means? A steady state means nothing changes versus time. So there is no gradient of any variable with respect to time. So let's start with a very simple form of energy conservation equation. We don't want to, you, you, you guys may not use this equation. You guys really, I'm gonna use only the result from these equations in this chapter. But the result, as I said, the result of these equations are the, of these equations is very, very important. It is very important. So again, we don't want to directly use this equation in this problem that much. Now, if a steady state condition means nothing changes versus time. In terms of heat transfer, if you have a wall inside is 20 degrees Celsius, outside 3 degrees Celsius, and in each layer uh, you have different temperature. Let's say at this mid, mid layer, mid plane, you have the temperature of 11 degrees Celsius. So since you have a temperature difference in one dimension, because you see all the temperature in each surface, all you, the temperature distribution in each surface is uniform. So the temperature gradient is only happening in X direction, in horizontal direction, from 20 to 11 to three, and in between we have other temperatures. <clears throat> so this is the flow that you have. If you want to write the energy conservation equation, you have energy inlet to the wall, energy outlet, and in total it results in the rate of change of total energy stored inside the wall or in terms of symbols, I can write it in this form. So my control volume in this equation is this one. So this is what I'm focusing on, just the wall. Whatever flow toward the ins inside of the wall is minus whatever that is, whatever the flow out is, result in a change of energy stored inside the wall versus time. If you are talking about a steady state condition, this gradient or the right hand side is zero. Now, if you have a steady state condition, that means flow does not change. So let's look at one, one specific layer, certain layer in here, just one layer inside the wall. According to the Fourier's <clears throat> law or Fourier's equation, the Conduction transfer equation can be calculated using this formula, Ka times dt over dx. <clears throat> temperature gradient in a, a spatial temperature gradient, a spatial temperature gradient, temperature gradient with respect to x direction. Now, if I integrate it, if I integrate these, and multiply both sides by dx and then integrate, this is what I have from zero to L, from x equals zero to L, that is the thickness of the wall, then your and your temperature at the left hand side is T1, right hand side T2, this is what you have. So this is interesting. Your, this is a very simple result. We had that equation in previous lecture, but it's good to review. It, it says that when you have a steady state condition, when whatever that is flowing in is equal to whatever that is flowing out, and also since the heat transfer inside the wall is this, the heat flow, instead of using this equation, can be calculated using this equation. Instead of using the gradient, we can use finite difference form. Or the other result is the temperature gradient 
the temperature of profile inside the wall is linear. I mean, as I said, these are the concepts that you're going to learn more in heat transfer course. But here, you just need to know that this is the heat transfer equation inside for the conduction inside the plane wall in a steady state condition with no generation and no sink and no source inside the wall. What do I mean by sink and source? Let's say you, you pass some piping, pipes and tubes and channels inside the wall, like a hot water pump, hot water pipe, or cold water pipe. So you have some sink that's colding, that cooling, cooling down the, uh, the wall or source that is heating the wall. So this is the equation that I have. Now, I'm going to use that equation, that simple equation, to perform a very interesting anal analogy. Analogy between thermal and electrical current and flow, or thermal resistance concept. Look at a very simple electrical resistance. At two ends, you have different potentials, different voltages. Those voltages result in voltage difference or potential for the current of the electrical flow of the electricity. So this is how you calculate the electrical current. The difference between the voltages divided by the electrical resistance, R sub E. Okay, and R sub E is calculated using this equation. Now, in heat transfer, I can use a similar concept because as you remember, the heat transfer as a result of temperature difference. The temperature difference is, is the driving force for heat transfer or natural driving force for heat transfer. So instead of voltage difference, I have temperature difference. And since the temperature of one, let's say, is larger than two, then there is a heat transfer from point one toward two. But what is against that heat transfer? The against, against heat transfer, if that heat transfer against that flow from T1 to T2 flow of heat, flow of thermal energy, could be the, the insulation, could be the thickness of the wall in between. So I, write, I, I get back to the equation, conduction equation. The conduction equation for a plane wall is this. I write it in this form, T1 over T2 over some R thermal resistance against conduction of the wall. If I set these two equal, these two first equation equal, this is what I get. The thermal resistance of the wall, if I want to simulate the heat transfer, the conduction heat transfer, the electrical resistance and electrical current case, this is what I have. This is the equation that I have for resistance in conduction transfer. And what does this resistance mean? This resistance means if this equation, if this value is large, then you have less heat transfer between point one and two. And if it's a smaller, then you have more heat transfer. Looking at the variables that you have for conduction and convection trans conduction transfer resistance, makes sense because R1 is correlated directly with the thickness of the wall. And that makes sense. When the thickness of the wall is larger, is bigger, then when the wall is thicker, then you have more insulation between T1 and T2. Let's say instead of having a wall with one centimeter thick, you have a wall in between these two sides, that is 50 centimeter thick. Obviously, there is going to be more insulation between two sides of this wall. So the thickness increases the thermal resistance and decreases the heat flow, thermal energy flow. Conductivity. Obviously, conductivity must be, is inversely correlated with thermal resistance. Then when the conductivity is high, it means the, the material is very conductive. It's not a good insulator. So if thermal resistance is a smaller, so there is gonna be more heat transfer. 
When the area is larger, also the thermal resistance is going to be smaller because when the wall has larger area, let's say when you have larger window in your, in your house, those windows can lose energy more. You can lose energy from your house to the outside in winter time because you have larger exposure area to the outside. So when you perform this analysis, the rate of heat transfer is simulated by electrical current, the thermal resistance by electrical resistance, and temperature difference by voltage difference. How about convection? Look at convection transfer equation. In convection transfer equation, again, if I set this equation, set this equal to this form, what I get from, for thermal resistance is this, one over Hs. Why am I doing this? Why am I setting those, those equations equal to this form? Because I want to write those convection transfer and conduction transfer in this form. Some voltage difference in heat transfer case, we have temperature difference, divided by some resistance. So that's why I reform this equation into this new shape to get this R equation. If I do the same for convection transfer, the R, if I set this to equal, the R is going to be one over H A S. And again, it makes sense. The, this thermal resistance is, is between the surface of the wall and the surrounding air, the surrounding fluid. So this is the resistance against convection between the surface and the air. It means if the air has a very high or any other fluid has a very high convection transfer or H value, then your resistance is lower and you have higher heat transfer rate. When the area is larger, larger exposure area, exposure surface, then your resistance against is lower. So if you want to insulate, if you, if, if, or basically if you want to have less heat transfer toward the outside, you may think of a case where the air in here is replaced by vacuum. When you have vacuum, then the H is basically is very small because there is no convection to almost zero. So H is almost zero and convection transfer resistance is very large. What does that mean? It means you are not losing energy in the form of convection transfer toward the outside. Or in other, in other explain cases, instead of, use, instead of using some fluid that, is, that has a very low heat transfer coefficient, use a fluid that has a very large heat transfer coefficient, very large, H, H toward infinity. Then the H is very large. So R is going to be very, very small. When R is very small, this equation approaches infinity. What does that mean when this approaches infinity? It means you have a very large rate of heat transfer in the form of conviction between the surface and the surrounding air or surrounding any other types of fluid. And when you have a very large heat transfer rate, also it means that the temperature difference between the surface and the fluid is very small because there is a very high rate of heat transfer. So when there is a very high rate of heat transfer, they exchange thermal information, that's how I call it, very fast. So the temperature are very close in, term, in values. What about the radiation? The radiation, this is the equation that we have, right? So this is the equation that we have for radiation transfer exchange. Heat, heat, heat exchange between two surfaces, a surface that is surrounded by a surrounding. And that surrounding can be all the walls and windows and surfaces, roof, ceilings, uh, around the surface. So 
before driving this because I need to eventually set it equal to this equation, right? So before doing this, or basically by doing this, what I get is this. Your R for thermal radiation, thermal radiation is calculated using this equation. One over HR, H radiation, AS, and H radiation is this. H radiation is this. You know what I did first? I First I did, I set this equal to some imaginary equation. So this is what I want to have this equation in form of. If I set this equal, then H radiation is derived as this. And when I set these two equation equal, radiation thermal resistance can be calculated using this equation. Okay. So at the surface, you have one resistance corresponding to convection and one resistance corresponding to radiation. These are what we have. Now, what if you have multi-layer or composite multi-layer plane wall or composite wall? Then you're gonna have multi-layer of or multi resistances, conduction of the resistances. So first, let's let's start from T infinity one and end up the T infinity two. Between between the fluid at the left hand side and the surface, left hand side surface, there is some fluid, fluid number one, right? So there's going to be also convection transfer and convection transfer resistance or resistance against convection transfer. How is it calculated? One over H one A. Between node T one, this node, this node is located at the surface of the left hand side of the of the first wall, and the second wall, I have one layer of certain wall number one. So the thermal resistance is L1 over H1, K1, L, K1A. I have another layer, L2 over K2A. And one more layer, I have conviction at the right hand side, 1 over H2A. So I have four, four thermal resistance. Since this is a steady state flow, the flow that is coming must be exactly the same, the flow that is leaving the composite wall. So the flow at each, each point, at all points are the same, and they're all equal to overall flow. How do you calculate the overall flow? To calculate the overall flow, I, I use the analogy between electrical resistance in series connection of the electrical resistances and thermal resistances. So the flow according to series connection of electrical resistance is this. The difference between the thermal energy potential T infinity one minus T infinity two divided by all the forces against the thermal heat transfer. So I, I'm writing this equation in the form in the form that is very similar to electrical current in electrical resistance. Okay, so the flow is equal to, the flow of heat is equal to potential difference between two points that I choose divided by all the thermal resistances in between. So, this equation is coming from analogy between whatever that they had in electrical resistances and thermal resistances. What are the th all the thermal resistances in between T infinity and T infinity two? One and two. This one, this, this, this. 
So total resistances is summation of all the resistances in between one and two. Now, you may ask what's the benefit of this? More general form of this equation is this. The heat flow in a steady state, heat transfer inside or between two sides, uh, between two sides of between two sides or two points in a composite wall can be calculated using this equation. Using this equation. The temperature difference between two points divided by all the resistances in between those two points. Okay. So here, I don't have to always use this equation. T infinity one and T infinity at the very right hand side divided by all the R. According to this equation, I can choose these nodes. Only T infinity one and T infinity two. So according to this equation, the heat flow is equal to T infinity one minus T, T two, not T infinity, T two divided by all the thermal resistances in between. I only have two thermal resistances in between. And those are convection and conduction for the first layer. Instead of this. Or I can use other form. Also this is equal to T infinity one minus T one divided by R convection one. So I can only, I can choose these two nodes, write the temperature difference between those two nodes, divide them by the thermal resistance in between that is only convection. Also Q is equal to this. T infinity one minus T two divided by all the thermal resistances that they have in between convection and conduction. Also, let's say you have only, you want to calculate the Q according to this, these two nodes. The Q can be calculated using this equation. And also, more importantly, they don't really use this equation to calculate Q. They use only, not all of them, they use just one of them, let's say this, and set them equal to one of these three equations or this one to find the unknown values. You're gonna see these in a problem. So it depends on what, what, uh, what temperatures are known and what of them, which of them are unknown. Let's say you are given T2 and T infinity one. You are given all the thicknesses and the conduction transfer coefficients. Then uh, you are given T infinity one and T infinity two, but you're asked to calculate T infinity three. What would you do? So first you use this equation to calculate, to calculate the Q because you are given T2, you are given T infinity one, and all the thicknesses, and the convection transfer coefficients and conductivity, all the Ks and H and Ls, and the area. Then you are asked to calculate T3. What you do is you set it equal to this equation, because these two Q dot must be the same. Right, the flow is the same because you have series connection of resistances, like electrical resistances. So the flow is the same. Instead of electrical flow, you have thermal flow or heat transfer, heat flow or thermal energy flow. T infinity one is given, R convection one, you have it. So T infinity one, T infinity one, can be calculated. So this is given, this is given, this is given. This is what you're asked to calculate. You set two equation equal 
and T infinity T1 is calculated. Let's say T infinity 1 and T2 is given, and all other thicknesses and all the thicknesses and uh, convection transport options and conductivity. Then you use this equation to calculate T3. Because this is given, this is what you calculate, you calculate, and this is the unknown that can be easily calculated by setting this equation equal to this. And if let's say T infinity two is unknown, you set this equation equal to the third one to get the T infinity two. You're gonna see that in one example. There is one more concept that I want to talk about. Uh, we don't want to use it that much in this chapter, but it's good to mention it right after introduction to thermal resistance. So typically, we want to have heat transfer equation in this one. Why? Because you don't have, when you have a thermal system like a heat exchangers in power plant or <clears throat> A specific heat exchanger and any other thermal system, you don't have only one fluid or one wall. You have composite wall, you have different fluids at different sides. So when you're asked to ask uh, to calculate heat transfer, typically you are given over a heat transfer coefficient. You are not given H, you are not given K. You or typically you're asked for to ask for a calculation of over heat transfer coefficient. What is, the, what is the overall heat transfer coefficient of the whole system instead of just convection transfer of certain fluid inside your system or certain layer of the wall inside your heat exchangers? That's why they, they want to write the heat transfer for a system in this form. What are you, what is U? A is the area of the heat transfer. Delta T is the temperature difference between two certain points that you choose in your heat exchanger or any other thermal systems. UA is one over or reciprocal of overall thermal resistance, overall thermal resistance between those two points where you have the temperature difference in between. So let's solve an example and see how do we use the thermal resistance concept to calculate for unknown temperature. Consider uh, 0.8 meter high and 1.5 meter wide glass window with a thickness of 8 millimeter and a thermal conductivity of 0.78 watt per meter Kelvin. What is the heat transfer rate of the heat transfer rate through this glass? and the temperature of its inner surface for a day during which the room is maintained at 20 and outside is negative 10 degrees Celsius. This is negative 10, by the way. Here, this is not 210, this is negative 10 degrees Celsius. Take the heat transfer coefficient for the inner and outer surface, outer surfaces of the windows as these 10 and 40. So, I want to use the thermal resistance concept. That's why you see I, I draw the thermal resistances in between the inner side of the window and outer side of the window or outside. So this is inside the house, this is outside. I have three thermal resistance in total. The thermal resistance or convection thermal resistance for the fluid inside, T infinity one, temperature at the inner surface of the window or glass, temperature at the outer surface of the glass, and temperature outside. I have another thermal resistance, convection thermal resistance, and one conduction thermal resistance in between. First of all, I need to make an assumption. So you see that for most of the problem, I make assumptions. What, why do I make assumptions? The purpose of making assumption is to make the solution simple, to make the solution or even better, uh, easier or possible. Because if you don't make any assumptions, then, then probably you have to consider all the factors and all the influences and all the mechanism in your solution. And that's probably not possible based on given information because you are not always given all the information in the problem. 
first of all, the, it says that the heat transfer through the window is a steady state. Because if you don't have a steady state, then you cannot use the thermal resistance concept. This is what I want you guys to remember. If you don't have, if you don't have a steady state condition, then you, you cannot use thermal resistance concept. Especially when you get to heat transfer cores, you see that the thermal resistance concept is only meaningful in the case of having a steady state. When you don't have a steady state, everything changes and becomes more, compli and more complicated and you cannot use this concept. The second concept is, again, this is a concept that I believe you're going to see that more in heat transfer cores. One dimensional. What does that mean? It means the flow of heat is like in this direction only. Because the temperature difference is only in horizontal direction. It means you don't have heat transfer in this direction, in other direction. Otherwise, you're gonna have two to three thermal exchange, three-dimensional three heat transfer and thermal energy exchange, then everything is gonna be different then you need to use the, the three-dimensional Fourier's equation. And the last assumption is thermal conductivity is constant. The thermal conductivity is given in the problem and we're gonna use it. Why it says it's constant? Because why do we need to make this assumption? Because at the left-hand side, the temperature is T1, right-hand side T2, and there is temperature difference inside the, inside the wall. And conductivity is a function of temperature, but we ignore that change because conductivity does not change significantly with temperature. So we use just one unique value. Now, first of all, what is the area of the window? The area, again, guys, this is the side of the window. This is the thickness. So the, by area, I mean this. This is the area. This is the thickness of the wall. Okay, this is L. Okay. So A area is 0.8 times 1.5 meter. That is equal to 1.2 meter squared. Now, We calculate the thermal resistances. We have convection thermal resistance, conduction, and convection. Based on the formula for the left-hand side, one over convection transfer coefficient times the area, convection transfer coefficient of the fluid inside, convection transfer coefficient of the fluid outside, and the thermal the resistance for the glass, thickness of the glass divided by convection conductivity of the glass times the area. All the areas are the same. What's the unit? Look at the unit. The unit of the thermal resistance is degree Celsius per watt. So temperature unit per power unit. Also, instead of degree Celsius, you can also write Kelvin per watt. Why here I have Kelvin, and but in here I write degree Celsius? Because there is no difference. You can write Kelvin per watt. Because when we talk about the yeah, when you talk about the thermal resistance, you are referring to temperature difference effect, effect of temperature difference, not absolute temperature. And the temperature difference in Kelvin unit and uh, degree Celsius unit are the same. Now that I have thermal resistance, the total thermal resistance is calculated as this. Convection plus glass plus con convection at the right hand side. And the heat flow, overall heat, or the uh, heat flow, heat transfer from one from the left side to the right hand side, is temperature difference between the left fluid and the right fluid divided by all the thermal resistances in between those two fluids. So I'm focusing at these two nodes. In these on these two nodes. Temperature difference between these two nodes and all the thermal resistances in between that are that are connected in series form. Now, I'm also asked to calculate 
the temperature at the inner side of the glass because T1 and T2 are not given. You are given the temperature of the fluid inside or T infinity one and fluid outside or T infinity two. To calculate this, I use the approach that I just talked about before the example. The flow here is the same as flowing here, the same as this, because this is a, like an electrical resistance in series form, so the flow is the same. Okay, so any section and segment of this thermal resistance that you choose, the flow of heat through it is the same as other segments, remaining part of the thermal resistance. So I already calculated Q based on overall temperature difference between left hand side and right hand side. This flow is also the same for this segment. T infinity one minus T, T one divided by thermal resistances between T one and T infinity one. That is only conduction thermal resistance. This is known. This is known, I just calculated, this is unknown. Q that is already calculated. So from here, T1 is calculated. So this is how I use the thermal resistance concept to calculate the unknown temperature. Now, one of the applications of the thermal resistance concept and basically heat transfer analysis is insulation in certain situations, certain weather conditions. One of them is very, very interesting one is body insulation, using certain types of clothing when someone wants to ski. And there is a website that talks about the senior skier needs and what temperatures, what temperatures and what type of insulation must be provided for the skiers to make them feel comfortable at certain cold conditions. This is an example, there is an example on this application that I want you guys to work on. So clothing made of several thin layers of fabric with trapped air in between, often called a ski clothing, is commonly used in cold climates because it is light, fashionable, and very effective thermal insulator. So it is no surprise that such clothing has largely replaced thick and heavy old fashioned coats. So if you don't want to use this concept, then you have to wear very thick uh, and heavy jackets or coats to provide yourself the warm conditions, body conditions and comfortable conditions. And instead of that, they use the thermal resistance concept. How? This is one form. So consider a jacket made of five layers of 0.1 meter thick synthetic fabric that has a conductivity of 0.13 watt per meter Kelvin. That is a very low conductivity. It means each layer of that synthetic fabric is very good insulator, but it's very thin, it's 0.1. So to make up for that, thin layer, very thin and a small thickness, they use layers, so with, with 1.5 millimeter thick air space between the layers. And air is also having, has a very small conductivity. You see, I didn't mention convection transfer coefficient of the air in here. When I talk about the different layers of the air in between different synthetic fabric layers, I talked about conduction because the gap is very small and air does not have that freedom, that much of freedom to, to circulate and to move and to have con con conviction, to conviction and advection between layers. Assuming the inner surface temperature of the jacket is 28 and the surface area is 1.25, what is the rate of heat loss throughout the jacket when the temperature of the outer is zero and the heat transfer coefficient at the outer surface is 20 watt 25 watt per meter square Kelvin. So you have one, two, three, four, five layers of fabric. Here is the person's body. 
Here is outside. Outside the zero degrees Celsius, and in between each layer, you have air. So you have four layer of air, and also you have air in here with the convection transfer coefficient as 25 degrees, 25 watt per meter square Kelvin. The area of this layer is also given, 1.25 degrees Celsius, 1.25 meter square. The conductivity of this layer is given, are given, 0.26. The conductivity of these layers are also given, 0.26. these blue layers as 0.13 watt per meter Kelvin. And the thickness of them is also given, the thickness of these. So the thickness of these air gap are also given. The thickness of these blue lines are also given. The temperature, 28. The inner surface temperature of the jacket is also given. So this is 28, not the air. The last layer, the last layer on the right-hand side has a temperature of 28. The right-hand side of the last layer, or basically the layer right on the body surface has a temperature of 28 degrees Celsius. The outside temperature is zero degrees, so this is what you are given, T infinity. T of the surface, let's say, inside I is given. H for this is given. K for all this layer are given. And K for the layers of the fabric. According to this, you are asked to calculate the rate of heat loss throw the jacket. You have all the information. You don't need to know the temperature at every point. Just choose two nodes where you have enough information and calculate the temperature difference between those two nodes and divide them, with, divide them by total thermal resistance in between two nodes. Two nodes. The second part and three, the third part are also very interesting. So the In the second part, the question is, what would, be, what would your response be if the jacket is made of a single layer of 0.5 millimeter thick synthetic fabric? So you don't have layers of air. You don't have gap, air gap. You don't have five layers. Just one layer that is thicker than this and just calculate the heat transfer based on the same condition. What about the case where so what should be the thickness of the wool fabric? If the person is to achieve the same level of thermal comfort wearing the thick wool coat instead of a five layer ski jacket. So you want, so what, this is what you're asked. You're asked to, to calculate thickness for this case. Let's say T. Based on the Q of the first case. So what would be the thickness with this conductivity of the fabric to achieve this Q? So this is what your guys ask to calculate as an assignment for this session. And I create uh, a folder on Blackboard so you guys can submit your solution. And guys, always keep in mind that you always have access to the manual and solution manual for most of the problems after the submission day. So please go over the solution manual, uh, like what we did in uh, on-ground uh, class sessions. So you remember that I gave you in class activities, I used to give you in class activities, and after you were finished, I would put the solution on board. So please make sure you go over the solution that are posted after the due date. Thank you guys and have a great week.